Oh, well, I've had 30 years in business. That's awesome. Now, and now, and now. And she's in the night. Hey, that's awesome. Oh. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. I think Holland's doing it for me now. Oh, Thank you. Good. Appreciate it. Appreciate good it. Eye. Yeah. Hi, I'm Angela. I'll be in the business for three months. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good one. Hey. All right, yeah. now. Well, welcome, welcome. Hi, my name is Chris Walsh. Uh, my wife Tracy and I have been with Kelly Williams for five years. Uh, partner, and we're also then, of course, oh, we can use a refresher. That's why we're here. Okay, awesome, awesome. <laughs> you can go ahead and talk. Me, you can oh, talk too. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, my partner, Chris, we've been agents here for five years now. It's a great office, and we want to make that this really, really beneficial program. That's pretty much so we could just to keep active and keep um, knowledgeable with yes, yes. keep knowledgeable with the market and practices too. So I thought that really okay, great, great. And if you start on Sodio, and I be later for two months and we will be able to go Awesome, awesome. And Alex and the uh, other agent, I have my uh, work. Uh, Apple and the uh, the uh, brokerage for like about uh, one uh, and a half months. Oh, yeah, make them uh, okay. okay. Okay, great. Great. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's Evelyn Romero. I'm a new agent and I'm Kirsten Knight. Awesome. Awesome. I've been in Fairhope and this is my first month with Kelly Williams. And this is my first month. First month, first. Come on, get yourself in here. Now, those of you that are online, would you like to introduce yourself real quick, Paula? Hi, I'm Paula Wise. Um, I was actually on a team in November and went through the all day long sim, uh, Ignite version. I'm glad we're doing it in pieces because that was overwhelming. Um, I'm now a single agent and I'm about to close escrow on my first deal. And then we'll be listing my client's property uh, next month. Thank you. Congratulations. And Thank welcome. you so much. All right. All right. Michael. Unmute yourself. I've been with Keller Williams for how long? I've been with uh, about a year. I've been a licensed realtor since 2020. I'm also a real estate investor, fix and flip, rehab, wholesale. Okay, well, welcome, welcome. Veronica. Hi, everyone. My name is Veronica, and I've been with the, the company for a month and a half now, it's almost two months, and this is my first Ignite. Well, welcome, congratulations. Crystal. Hi everyone, my name is Crystal Smith. Um, I have been a licensed realtor since 20, February of 2019. Um, Keller Williams has always been um, my office. Um, and then I am a part of a, um, a, a team as well. Uh, well, Fred Howard's team. Oh, awesome. Welcome. Welcome. And mind you, she was a previous client. That's how I got her. Oh. <laughs> she was a previous client. Okay. Christopher. Christopher. Welcome. Or is this... Thank you. Okay. Christopher. Okay. Yeah. Uh, today is actually officially my start day, August 1st. Um, okay. I got my license uh, in uh, May. Um, uh, I'm my wife is also um, uh, starting today and we're going to be a team and uh, starting this uh, to see if we can actually ignite something. All right, all right. Well, welcome, welcome, welcome. Feel free, you know, my wife says I talk too fast. So if I'm talking too fast, please let me know to slow down and I will definitely slow down, okay? 
but we're going to start right off on today. Ignite, spark your career. I'm going to make sure that you guys can see what's on the screen. Um, and we've got to turn them on. Now it's okay. So here we have uh, with um, Ignite, it's interesting that the two things you need is your participant guide, and you can get that online if you don't have it, and conversations to spark your career. As you know, we don't use the word scripts anymore. We use them as conversations, okay? Because it makes it much easier to talk when we're dealing with conversation rather than scripts. You wanna make sure that if you don't have it today, that you'll have it on the next class, which is tomorrow. Now, here's the plan that KW has uh, Monday through Friday. However, ours, is a little bit different. Ours is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, I'm sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And we're doing both in class and on Zoom. The reason why we, we're skipping Wednesday is because Wednesday is our team meeting from 12 to 1, and then our productivity class from 1.30 to 2.30. So we want to make sure that we keep those in line so that we can stay focused. So it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. However, if you're in the productivity class or you're uh, continuing um, in the team meetings, you'll see us every single day. Isn't that wonderful? Except two days, every single day. That's wonderful. Listen, let me make sure we go here. The course moves to four general objectives. Four general objectives. These four general ex objectives are real estate expert of choice, which is the days that we're going to be going through Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Lead generation will be going through on days five and nine, and then lead follow up will be going on days 10, 13 and transaction days 14 through 20. So by the end of Ignite, we want to make sure that you have one by at least, at least, everybody say at least, at least, at least one buyer or seller transaction through this course while you're moving forward, okay? Now that is the least amount. Now if you had 10, that would be great. How many want a transaction by the time you finish this course? Okay, let's do it. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can count them all. So, all right. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. So today, uh, we're going to be dealing with real estate experts. Spark your career. Tomorrow with Simon, you're going to be talking about embrace your job. And then on Thursday, connect with your market. And Friday, define your value. So when we look at the agenda today, we're going to be talking about a different way of thinking. And the way that we're talking about, because Ignite it's instills within us a new way of thinking. It's all about having a success-minded mindset. And when you have a success-minded mindset, you don't have any doubts that you can make it happen. And so we want to make sure that, and I tell people this all the time, just because some of you are new agents, just because you're a new agent does not mean that your professionalism cannot exude out of your personality, okay? And I always tell this, so if you heard it before, that's all right. When I was uh, being coached a year, uh, 15, 17 years ago, my question was, well, what am I going to do if they ask me how many homes that I sold, okay? And the response that my coach gave me, and I tell all of my mentees this, is there's not a house that I haven't sold, okay? I did not lie, okay? There wasn't a house that I haven't sold, but also there wasn't a house that I haven't sold, okay? So I was confident in that, and guess what? There was a client that asked me, how many homes have you sold? 
And I literally sat at the kitchen table and told her, there's not a house that I haven't sold. Now let's take this contract and let's sign it and let's get it into escrow. And guess what? We did it. Okay. And that's all she wrote. So we want to make sure that you have no doubt. Change your way of thinking. It's about having um, an unlimited mindset that's that's fueled by our, what we call our six personal perspectives. And we'll be going over that in this lesson. Now, while we'll be going over this, KW Culture, the value of working with KW and your market center. How, what is the value? You say, Frederick, why have you been with KW for so long? Well, when I started with KW, I started with the drinking age time, okay? Y'all know the, the drinking age time, it's 721. I got, you know, that's what I always started, bringing it to me. And so when I started with them, I remember I got my license. And the reason why I went with them was because that's where I went to school. You know, I went to school um, at their school. I was working 10 at night to six in the morning. I was going to school from nine, uh, from nine to, uh, wait, no, no, from seven to nine, I was going to school went from there to work, and then I got my license. So when I got my license, it was like, they told me, you have to hand your license somewhere. So guess what? I went to the drinking age company, right? Mm -hmm. Mingle it. And so I sat there, I was sitting at the table. I'm like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? They said, just wait for the phone ring. Wait for the phone ring. And I'm like, okay. So I'm sitting there waiting for the phone ring. And guess what? The phone rings. Yes. And they say, I want to see a property on Ruth Ellen. I'm like, great. Okay, when do you want to see it? I want to see it in the next 30 minutes. I'm saying, great. <laughs> so I picked up my bag, went to the house, opened up the house, waiting at the door. Guess what? No one come down. I'm like, okay. So I go back to the office. I said, well, nobody showed up. You know, I opened the house and nobody showed up. They said, okay, wait until another phone call comes. And so I did that over and over again until one day I was sitting at dinner with my wife on her birthday and I ran into somebody who worked at Keller Williams Realty. She used to work for me as a hairdresser. I didn't tell you, I did hair, hair for 17 years. Mm -hmm. But she used to work for me. And she said, yeah, I'm with Keller Williams. And I said, great, great. Tell me about it. She told me about it. And guess what? The next day, that was on a Sunday. The next day, I was in this office interviewing to find out what KW was all about. And I signed up right then and there and has never looked back. OK? I've gotten calls to move, but I said, where am I going? You know, one thing, I, I have agents that love me, that are with other companies and will tell me, you know what? I will refer somebody to KW because, just because of their training. Even though I can't convince them, I'm trying to convince them, I'm trying to convince them, amen. Now, I said, now y'all know I say amen. The reason why I say amen is because y'all know I'm a preacher. So leave me alone, okay? <laughs> So, so we're going to give you a new way of thinking, a new way of thinking of this business being difficult. Daily success systems that we have that help you through the process. And so we've all been down the same road, whether it be in real estate or in business, all of us have been down the same road. And all of it has been trying to get someone to agree to what we're saying. Okay, so in real estate, how do you purchase? How do you buy? How do you get to the point where you make yourself knowledgeable enough so that you're the expert in your field? Okay. Now, uh, what's your name? Shireen. Shireen, 30 <laughs> years, and she said she's getting back to the business. But guess what? She's an attorney, right? Yeah. yeah she I, does law. Maybe you mentioned, but yeah, been in law for 16. 16. But, yeah. So so you understand real estate law, they kind of go hand in hand. Now she's She's the type of person who will look at everything in the contract for you, you know, <laughs> sometimes, you know, but, you know, for, but for that long in the business, and she's still at Ignite because guess what? You never stop learning. You know, there is a time when you stop learning. You want to know when that is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. You know, every day you are learning something. Every day. Okay. Every day, believe it or not. Anyone can do it. Not everyone will. The question is, will you? That's the question, okay? So here are the six personal perspectives. Let me see if I can get this out of the way. 
six person, personal perspectives. One is to commit to self-mastery. Everybody say commit to self-mastery. Say it again. You want to know the key to living a life of abundance? Huh? It's right here. Six personal perspectives. One is, when you look at the six personal perspectives, people who have come before us think certain ways. And so here, number one, it says, commit to self-mastery. And when you talk about committing to self-mastery, uh, the first perspective that we're looking here, it's not talking about commit to everyone's mastery. It's committing to self-mastery. Now, let me ask you a question. What has hindered you to master yourself? Somebody volunteer and tell me what, what has hindered you from mastering yourself. Allowing distractions. Allowing distractions. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes. Not being disciplined. Not being disciplined. Okay. Anybody else? Procrastination. Not being oh. Procrastination. Ooh, that, mm, go ahead. And Crystal? Consistency. Consistency. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Self-doubt. Ooh, self-doubt. Ouch. Yeah, that was good. Ouch. That, that hit somebody right there. Self-doubt. Okay, anybody else? Say that again. Okay, so self-mastery is the possession of great knowledge, skills, and habits that you, that make you the master of you, okay? In order to have self-mastery, there's something that you have to do. You have to know your goals. How many of you here know your goals other than in real estate? When they ask you why you want to do real estate, because I'm going to make a lot of money. How many know your goals? What's your goals, Alex? See, didn't I tell you? See, that's, that's the thing. When we talk about goals, many times it is geared towards the money portion. But did you know in order to have financial freedom, you have to master what's hindering you, okay? It's a real conversation about what's hindering you. Self-doubt, procrastination. Um, uh, what did you say? Shereen, uh, sorry. Shereen, Shereen. What did you say? Uh, allow yourself to be distracted. A, a distraction. You've got to know your strengths and you've got to know your weaknesses, okay? If you have a strength, what do you do when you're working on, on in your strength? You're working in your strength, right? What do you do when you know you have a weakness? Avoid it. Yeah. Do you avoid it? Well, we have a, I think, a natural inclination to avoid things that are a little bit harder or a mm -hmm. spot. Yeah. But then we keep them in that place and do those first. So let me tell you something. When you have a weakness, you have to you have to replace it with somebody who has a strength in that. Okay because you still need it. If your weakness is talking to someone, guess what? You need to have someone on your team that is good at talking to someone because you still need those tools in order to move forward, okay? Now, uh, let's name, name some of your strengths and name some of your weaknesses. Somebody name a strength that you have. It takes a lot to scare me, I guess. Like, okay, you know, your strength I, is you're not you're not easily frightened. Yeah, but that's easy. You know me so well. Mm -hmm. Not easily frightened? Mm -hmm. no. Okay. So what's your weakness? Totally I'm so easily distracted. I'm like, beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Which is real estate brain. Like that's okay. pretty common with us. So, so in your strength, you're not fearful, but in your weakness, you're distracted. Mm -hmm. So when you're dealing in business, you need someone who knows your weakness and gets you back on track. Every time. Okay, let's focus. So, so 
you'll you'll be talking about one thing, and then you'll go to another thing, and then you'll go to another thing, and then you'll go to another thing, and then it's your job to say, okay, let's focus on this right here. She okay. Four times See? Good. Good. See? Good. Okay. Know how to work with both your strength and your weakness. The question is, when you have a weakness, not to ignore it, not to get it out of the way. The question here is, when you have a weakness, you have to know how to work with both your strengths and your weakness. The question is, are you committed to self-mastery? Are you really committed to self-mastery? Hold on. Are you committed to self-mastery? Say yes or no. Yes, yes. 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 You're committed to self-mastery? Yes. Okay. So throughout at night, you're going to be acquiring the skills and developing the habits to be successful. That's what we're going to be talking about. What do you need in order to be successful? Moving you toward self-mastery. Now, are you committed to knowing your goals and your strengths? Are you committed to uh, dealing with your strengths and your weaknesses? Are you committed to acquiring the knowledge that you need in order to move forward, the skills and the habits to be successful in this business? I want you to, I want you to repeat after me. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I, believe. I, believe. I, believe. I, believe. I will. I will. I will. I will. I will. To self-master. To self-master. To self-master. the question on whether or not you're going to be dealing with self-mastery to continue in Ignite. So the second perspective that we have, so we, hold on. Sorry. Okay. So. The second perspective, so we know our goals, you know your strengths, your weaknesses, you know how to work with both your strengths and weaknesses to seek and master the necessary knowledge, skills, and habits to reach your goals. Number two, you've got to commit to the 80-20 principle. The idea that 20% of your actions lead to 80% of your results. 20% of your actions leads to 80% of your results. This is the most po powerful principle that you can apply to your life because it not only works in real estate, but it works in every part of your life, okay? I'm gonna spend a lot of time doing life. Are you to? Used to, I know you're saying. Used to. No, we still do. Huh? We still do. Still do? Well, we pay the company. But, but before you paid the company, you were spending a lot of time. And while you were thinking about it, because I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Okay? It was like, while I'm creating a fly, I'm creating in my mindset, well, what are they going to say? What are they going to think when I put this on there? How is it going to look? Or how are they going to respond? Or how many people are going to respond when I do this? And is this put in the right place? Or is this in the right place? Or am I doing that? That is your 80%. Your 20% is doing what? Huh? Lead generation. Say the lead. Huh? No. 20% is lead generation. 20% is getting on the phone. 20% is knocking on the door. 20% is doing circle prospecting, okay? When you do your 20%, that will give you 80% of the money in your pocket, okay? Now, I know you say, listen, I need to do it. Hire somebody when you can. You'll sometimes hear the 20% activity described as your big rocks, your one thing, or your dollar productive activities. Your 20% is your dollar productive activities. Those are the things that are going to get you the 80% that you need in your pocket. What would you guess is the most dollar productive activity of the real estate agent? Class facing. Say it again. Client facing, getting on the client phone. facing, client facing, ear to ear. Dialing for dollars. Say that again. Dialing for dollars. 
dialing for dollars, mm -hmm. face to face, ear to ear, text to text. Yep. Facebook message to Facebook message. You know, those are the new things. Instagram, Instagram message, live videos. You know, those are the things that you do in order to get yourself into dollar productive activity. In Ignite, we identify your 20%, your dollar productive activities that we're going to use in order to help you succeed in your business. In lead generation, when you are committed, what we're now what we're doing in our productivity class, we're doing our 3612 3. If you don't know what 3612 3 is, it's 36 transactions in 12 months doing three hours of lead generation. The key here is your your 20% is your three hours of lead generation. Okay? Your three hours of lead generation. Yeah. 3612 3. That's 36 transactions in 12 months doing three hours of lead generation every single day. Your dollar productive activity of lead generation. When you commit to this, you'll make more money, have more time with your family and more organized. That is wonderful, isn't it? See, my goal, one of my goals was that I wanted to go see my son and my daughter-in-law anytime I wanted to when they lived in Spain. And instead of saying, but I didn't have the money, I replaced my butt with any. And when I placed my butt with Ann and I set my goal, guess what? I was able to visit my grandchildren and my son in Spain when I wanted to do it with, with no reservations. I was able to take two weeks off of work and to be able to do that. Now, I'm glad they're back. They're in Atlanta now. After nine years in Spain, they're in Atlanta. So I'm excited about that. Okay, that's my little, my little thing. Okay, <laughs> so number three. Any questions about the 80%? Any questions about the 80-20 principle? Now, you know your 20% is what? Lead generation. Just call it LG, okay? Your 20% is your lead generation. And believe it or not, guess what? Your 20% is not gonna happen on your first day. It's not gonna happen in your first week. Just because you don't see the results does not mean it is not working. Lead generation means that you got to be face to face, ear to ear, hand to hand with somebody, letting them know what you do. Okay. So when I was walking around in my 20% when I was doing hair, the first thing that I did when I saw a woman was, hey, your hair looks beautiful. Where do you get it done? How much does it cost? Why don't you give me an opportunity to do your hair? That was my conversation ever. And I was married, but I had the license to talk to women. Hey, all right now. Okay. But that was my conversation. Okay. So now, and I wasn't afraid to do it. So now as realtors, what what do we hey, my name is Frederick. You know, I'm a realtor in the community. You know, I'm I'm working with buyers and sellers. I'm working with those that are interested in buying, selling, or investing. And you know, if you know someone who's interested, why don't you just go ahead and give them my card? You know, one of my cards are right here because I keep my cards in my pocket, right? And we hand them your card. You hand them your card because that is part of your 20%. The third perspective is moving from E to P, moving from the entrepreneurial approach to the purposeful approach. The third perspective, when we look at top performers, Recognize and understand how to move beyond the E, which is entrepreneurial to purposeful. Entrepreneurial has a ceiling on it. And so in that ceiling, it causes us to get to a level of success utilizing our natural abilities. Now, I have a natural ability to talk. That's what I do. When, when, I'm never a stranger at a party, and when I am, it's, uh, I don't feel right. It means I'm sick. I don't use that word sick, but, you know, and it's not that I want to be noticed. It's just that I like people, right? That's a natural ability. I have a natural ability to talk, okay? That's why my wife says I talk too fast, because I talk too fast, and I have to slow myself down because I want people to hear what I am saying, okay? So your entrepreneurial will take you to a level. It'll take you 
to your natural abilities. And we can also expect to hit a ceiling when that happens. So let me, let me ask a question. What are some of your natural abilities? Something that you do with your eyes closed. Someone want to volunteer? Yes. Running. Running? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Sports. Yeah. Sports? Talk to strangers. Talk to strangers. Oh, mm -hmm. that's awesome. What did you say, Angela? Crunching numbers. Crunching numbers. Okay. <laughs> See, that's not everybody's natural ability. <laughs> yeah. You, you understand? And so with running and crunching numbers and, and, and talking to strangers, that can take you to a certain level. And so what you have to do is have to master how to get beyond that level. For example, let's say a kid, uh, you got really good at doing cartwheels and flips. You, uh, you have that natural ability. When I was growing up, it was handstands. You know, I could get on my hands and I could walk, you know, that, yeah, I can't do that now. I can't even get close to that. You know, but imagine that. They, uh, and then that kid that uh, is used to that, they get the ability to uh, perform in a circus. And most likely the answer would be no, because that's just doing flips. That's not doing what people in a circus do. Likewise, we all have a ceiling of achievement by relying on one of our natural abilities. And the way we break through uh, the ceiling of achievement is to get purposeful. What does uh, it mean to be purposeful for you? What does it mean to be purposeful? Intentional. Intentional. Focused on what I'm doing. Focused on what you're doing. Present. Being present in, the, present in the situation. What else? Looking for results. Looking for results. What else? Having a why. Having a why is good. What usually never changes drastically, but the principles always remain the same. Time blocking. Time blocking, that's, that's a broader version. That is true. What else? So let me give you a thing. There was a story that Gary Keller told in um, when I started business, and they, he was talking about um, the 36th touch. And he told the story about an agent that went into a community, went into a community, didn't know anybody. And what they did was they created a, uh, they went in asking everyone in the community who the realtor of choice was. And when they went in that area to find out who the realtor of choice was, everybody was like, no one had a specific person. And, and some people said, well, we really don't know. And then what they did was they went over the period of 36 touches and created a fake persona of a realtor. And after the 36 touch was done, they went back into the community and asked who was their realtor of choice. Guess who they chose? Pretend person. The fake realtor. Nice. Oh. <laughs> Amazing, huh? So that is why the one thing that means to be purposeful is to focus on models and systems that organize you and your tasks into the most efficient and effective endeavors possible. So in order to get to purposeful, you have to focus on models, systems, let's see, models, systems, uh, and focus, which gives you the breakthrough, okay? So the one thing that the principles always remain the same are models and systems. So I've been with KW for 30, I don't know, 17 years. When I started, there was a 36 touch. They still have the 36 touch. How many of us use that 36 touch? Okay. 
What is it? Oh, so, okay, I'm sorry. 36 touches is 36 touches in a year with one person. So you're touching them, not physically touching, you're, you're touching them 36 times, whether it be email, whether it be phone call, whether it be text, whether it be a drop off. But the one thing about the system is already set, meaning all you have to do is drop the name of the system and the system will say, Shereen, you need to send an email or it will automatically send the email. Shereen, the, the text that you send is sending. Then the next one would say, Shereen, you need to drop by and drop off something of value, okay? Then they'll say, Shereen, you need to make a phone call. And it automatically does that and it reminds you. You'll get a text, you'll get an email, and it'll say, Shereen, this is what you need to do, or Shereen, this is what's already been done. And so that was that 36 touch. So if you want to be uh, the what I've done, and, and I'm gonna be honest with you, yes, that 36 touch is just like Chris and um, Nobody raised their hand with the 36 touch because yeah, we just don't do it. Because it, let me tell you why I think what, what I'm thinking. Okay, this is this is my thought process. It's too far in advance, the third 36 touch, meaning I gotta wait a year. But guess what? It doesn't necessarily have to be that. Does it? Systems work. You focus on the system. My listen. And you're and remember we talked about self mastery, right? So we have to focus on what is going to be best for us. I remember when I started working in real estate, and I was the rookie of the year here. Made one hundred thirty-six thousand my first year working with sellers. I was working with foreclosures, and it was wonderful because I had a system. You know what my system was? It was simple. You know what my system was? Send one person six letters. Every 14 days. Send one letter. I mean, yes, yeah, send six letters to one person with 14 days in between each letter. And it was those that were in foreclosure. And I sent a letter. 14 days, I sent another letter. 14 days, I sent another letter. 14 days, I sent another six letters. And it worked. Okay? Guess what? The systems remain the same. Yes? The principle remains the same, but guess how I'm doing it now? I'm doing letters, but also I'm doing texts. Also, I'm doing email. 17 years ago, you know, text and email were, you know, that it was all that physical face-to-face -face contact. So systems and models work. Has anyone ever in here reached a place where they've reached their ceiling of achievement? Not yet? Okay. So, not only are we moving from a, um, uh, what did we say, um, from E to P, but now we're dealing with the fourth perspective. The fourth perspective is an obvious one, and you're already doing it by being here today, whether you're in person or you're online, being learning based, the foundation of your action plan. A learning based individual appreciates learning for their own improvement. They know those that are in the learning based place, they know what they know and they know there's always more to know. Listen, you know what you know, but yet you know there's always more to know, okay? You don't know what you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. So if you ask me about foreclosure, guess what? I know what I know. You may not know what I know, but I know what I know. But then, you may ask, you may ask somebody about- um, Hi, Brandy, uh, how are you? Hello, hello, Hi, I'm Brandy. doing well, how are you? I'm doing uh, well, how are you? Hello? Good, I'm so sorry. Hello. I, just, I just wanted to reach out to you quick. I had a really quick Hold question. Hold on, let's- Of course. Um,
Okay. Hi, how are you? You know, make sure if you are online, make sure you mute yourself before you start talking to people, okay? So you know what you know, right? Now, there are some people, like Chris, what do you know? What do you know? I know a lot of things. I know a little bit about everything. But what do you know that you know? Yeah, I know. I mean, but there's a part of real estate that you know. I mean, you know. You know. How to capture and connect with clientele. How to capture and uh, connect with clientele. You know that, right? Okay? And there's a confidence when you know what you know, right? Yes. And then you build around what you know with a learning based uh, foundation. Okay? Because you know, even though you know that, there's still other things that you still need to what? That you still need to know, okay? Learning-based individuals have made the decision to effective learning as the foundation of the piece of their action plan to develop their life. Trivial pursuits leads to nowhere. Know the knowings, know for knowing's sake. Ignorance-based. I know what I know and I'll ignore everything else. You know, it would be crazy for me to say, well, I know about foreclosures, so I don't need to know anything else. Because there were people that did that. There were people who knew about short sales, that knew about foreclosures, and that's all they knew. And when short sales and foreclosures went away, guess what? So did their business. Okay? Now, the market excites me right now. You want to tell me why the market excites me? The market excites me because we're going to have some foreclosures, but they're going to be different foreclosures than the ones that were in 2007. Because the foreclosures that happened in 2007 were foreclosures with homes that were underwater. They were upside down. No equity. Okay, these foreclosures that are coming are foreclosures that have equity. Okay, now did you know that a home forecloses that has equity and they lose the property and they walk away? It has the seller lost everything? No, no, why not? Equity and they walk away, then yeah, they really, they did. If they had equity and huh. they walked away from a house, and they foreclosed on it, right? And they lost their equity. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't they be able to claim the uh, whatever is over what they they lost, but what they owed, they, they sold it, and whatever you sold for above what they owed, they be able to claim it. You would think so, right? In theory, yeah. but then of course they're going to say fifty thousand in attorney's fees for the foreclosure, and then the just for the marshal and the lockout and everything. So that's definitely not the way for people to control the process right. of, of transitioning out of a house that's not working. Anybody else? See, say you had a house that was seven hundred thousand worth. You retail seven hundred thousand. It foreclosed for four hundred thousand. And the seller lost the house at a foreclosure sale. And you see the seller's gonna do what? I lost, lost my home, right? Guess what? The bank sold the property for 700,000. They're not going to give the, 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 the foreclosing property the money right away. The, the person who foreclosed has to go after that money because they will not voluntarily give it to them. And if they, and the mindset, is if they don't go after it, guess what? It remains there. So you as an agent, you have the ability with the knowledge of knowing, listen, you have equity, you can go after it. Let's help you go after that equity because the home sold for 300,000 more than it foreclosed has. The bank is not obligated to say, hey, hey, Mr. Victor, you know, we sold your house for 10 hundred, we only owe 400, here's the 300 minus fees. They're not gonna do that. Okay, so that's knowing what you know in a learning based situation. That's why I said I'm excited about this market right now because homes are foreclosing with equity, or either they're going to foreclose or they're going to sell stock foreclosure. Okay, stop me when I'm 
not making any sense. Okay. So training and education are a big part of moving forward to attain goals and to succeed at a high level. Learning-based individuals commit to the process of acquiring skill-based habits. Skill, everybody say skill-based habits. Skill-based skill habits. Ignite is just the start for you as a learning-based individual. You'll learn about many more learning opportunities that are available to you from Keller Williams. So Keller Williams has much more advanced training, even here at Ignite. We have maps, we have short-term uh, maps classes. Um, I told you, just to mind you, when I did that in my first year, I was a part of the maps program, okay? I had a coach keeping me accountable, okay? Because I had to commit to self-mastery because I was one that was a procrastinator, okay? I waited until the last minute to do everything. My name is Frederick, and I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> I had to do that. And the sacrifice, the sacrifice that you made in order to make it win, that was $1,000 a month for 12 months. $1,000, and it had to change my thinking. My thinking was, Okay, $1,000 a month, but I made $136, so that was $12,000. That was an investment, not a payment, okay? Now, that $1,000 a month, guess what it came with? It came with family reunion, but I had to get there. It came with mastermind, but I had to get there. But guess what? It only came with one phone call a week with a coach one phone call and the rest of that week it was on me but it worked okay because you have to commit to being learning based i am neither i am neither especially clever nor especially gifted i am only very very curious from albert einstein being learning based means staying in curiosity and being eager to learn more Okay. How many in here have an unlimited beliefs? Here's the fifth perspective. Remove your limiting beliefs. High achievers remove beliefs and hold them back. What type of beliefs have been holding you back? Come on, talk to me. Yes, go ahead, son. The language. The language? Yeah. Mm. That's something that I always think that is from a language. Your, lang your language isn't limiting. You have to say that to yourself. Because, okay, let's look at this. Let's look at this one. There are English speaking people that love to hear you talk. Guess what? Because our talking is blah, 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 blah. That's the way we feel. So when you talk, it's like a melodic, Sound that's going on. Enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. Now let me explain something. It, it's interesting. Now, my son, when he went to college, went to college, Cal Baptist University. I knew he was in love second semester because he came home speaking Spanish fluently. I said, oh, there's something, something going on. There's something, yes. Yeah. So I'm going the second semester in college, second semester in college, just come home to the Spanish woman. And so, of course, he married a young lady from Spain. Now, he came home just recently and he said, You know, I feel weird. He said, Because when I'm talking to daddy, he calls me daddy, when I'm talking to daddy, he interchanges his words with Spanish, he forgets that I would speak Spanish. And so he said, this is, this is his statement to me. He says, I feel now, listen to this, I feel now that when I speak English, I feel like I'm talking blah, 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 blah. You, you hear me? So you grasp the hope of your limiting belief that people do not want to hear you speak and take it as a love language and use it as that. To benefit you. Okay? You got that? Anybody else want to talk about their limiting beliefs? 
Hmm? Nobody? Anybody? Okay, y'all. What are limiting beliefs? They are thoughts and mindsets that limit you, like the ones that she just said. The ones on the side, I don't have time for training. I can't be successful in this market. I can't devote three hours a day. How many, how many said that when, uh, oops, I don't want to, you guys still see the video, right? Okay. I can't devote three hours each day to lead generation. When I talked about 36, 12, 3, the first time, those who were in the private TV class, how many said, man, I can't devote three hours to lead generation? Three hours from 9, 10, 11, 8, 9, 10, 3, 4, 5, okay, 1, 2, 3, those are hours. What do you do consistently for three hours other than sleep? Yes. Did you raise your hand? Oh, no. no. <laughs> so what do we do besides sleep for three hours straight? Yeah. In a normal day? Mm -hmm. I definitely would be in the kitchen for that stretch of time. Really? Once, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And a long run would be that, but we're not doing that just yet right now. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so why can't we? Yeah. You know, I often say, often say this. If you try it, if you try it, thank you. If you tried it for a week, if you tried it for a week, three hours of the lead generation, how many contacts do I expect you at the minimum to reach each day? Minimum. 20, 25. 20, 25 contacts a day. Okay. What's your definition of contact? Meaning getting in touch with people? Yes, calling people, um, passing out your card, going to the store, introducing yourself. Because remember, real estate is a contact sport. If you stay in, if you stay in a, a world all by yourself, you'll you'll make all by yourself money. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you have to get out there. You have to get out there, introduce yourself, let people know who you are. So it's important to know that many people will say, I don't have enough time for training. I don't have enough time to come to the office to train. Mind you, I don't use that as an excuse. I often tell people, you know, it's a hard pill to swallow when you're talking to me about telling me that you don't have time. That's a hard pill to swallow for me because I'm a pastor, I'm a realtor, I'm a publisher. I do, I have another business. When I started the business, I worked from 10 at night to six in the morning. I came to the office from, uh, well, I slept from seven to about 12, came to the office from one to five and I rinsed and repeated. Okay. And I did that because I wanted to remove that limiting belief. Okay. I can't devote three hours of lead generation each day. We all have a limiting beliefs and it's the best, it's best to recognize all of your limiting beliefs and change them. For example, are any of these in your head? I have to be an expert to know everything before I can begin my business. I'm not valid yet. I'm gonna believe they're not valid yet. Well, let me tell you something, you are. You want, to, you want me to tell you why you are? Because you spent at least 90 days studying how to be a real estate professional. You did your studying, you did your test, you got three certificates to say the same. Those three certificates were required in order for you to be able to take the state exam. You passed your background check. They said you were good enough to apply for the test. You went and took your test. How many times did you take the pass it? First time, took me four. Okay. So you are valid. And when you have the mindset of saying I'm valid, that changes your outlook. 
that changes the limited belief that you are not valid. You are valid. Say it. I'm valid. Say it again. I'm valid. Say it again. I'm valid. Okay. And what does valid mean to you? Worthy. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Worthy. Worthy. Capable. Capable. You have the ability, you have the knowledge, and what you don't have, everyone around you does. So even if somebody says, can you help me out of this foreclosure? You absolutely can. Somebody said, can you help me through this bankruptcy? You absolutely can. If somebody said, can you help me sell my house? You absolutely can. Do you know how to do it full out run? No, you don't, but you have people around you. That's why you're partnered with a mentor. That's why you're partnered with a coach. That everything someone asks you to do, somebody in your circle knows how to do it. So you are valid. Okay? Anybody ever say, I don't know how I can achieve a profit goal that will fund my life this year? I tell people, why? Why? Like this will take time to start your profit as far as like selling houses. Okay. You you have a you've ever gotten a paycheck? Uh, paycheck yes. Okay. You got a paycheck before, right? Mm -hmm, yes. Paycheck. Was it weekly paycheck or a monthly paycheck? It was um, two weeks. Two weeks, monthly. Two weeks, um, maybe the 1500 2000 2000 So imagine one paycheck being $10,000. I want that to just sit, sit in your mind. When the average paycheck in this market for a $500,000 sale is $12,500. Imagine a $10,000 paycheck. Just imagine that. Can you imagine that? Yeah. You can imagine that. Can everybody imagine that? Huh? Yeah. Okay. Visualize it. So when you imagine that $10,000 paycheck versus a $2,000 monthly, is that monthly or two weeks? Two weeks. So two, four. So that's two months of pay in one paycheck. Mm -hmm. So you do have the ability to fund your life with real estate. The one that gets me the the, the one that gets me the most, and I excuse me if I'm stepping on any toes, was when I was a team leader in Inglewood. The one thing that got me was that people were satisfied with two or three deals. They were satisfied with two or three deals. After two or three deals, they would sit down and say, "I'm going on vacation." <laughs> You know, I, 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 I didn't understand that because at the minimum, we should be doing 10 to 15 deals a year, minimum. Does that mean that you're not good and you're not? No, it just means that's a goal to shoot for. What, what did Charlie Brown say? Did you say, if you shoot for the moon, at least you'll hit the stars? So no, what? Some, oh, is that your next I think yeah. it was well, it was a target. It, it, if you reach for the stars, then at least you'll get the moon. Right? If, you the, if you reach for the moon, at least you'll get the stars. Something like that. Whatever's higher. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 What about I don't feel comfortable talking to people about real estate? Anybody ever have that? Shouldn't be. If you did, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in the corner. <laughs> Listen, what about the business will come to me naturally? I don't need lead generation. Ah, you see. What limiting beliefs that you're having right now in order to be successfully 
In order to successfully develop a higher level, you must clear your mind of your limiting beliefs. Throughout Ignite, you're going to learn how to combat your limiting beliefs and turn them into action. When limiting beliefs are, um, when you're dealing with that, you have to reframe your limiting beliefs. Activity in the participation guide, you want to do that in the participating guide. I don't think we have it here. Hold on. Okay, life happens, reality shows up. And that's what we're talking about in step number six, be accountable. But before we go to number six, did we get anything out of limiting belief? Hmm? Did we get anything out of that? Yes, okay. Absolutely, absolutely. Just do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. The sixth and last per perspective is about being accountable. What does being accountable to you mean? Do what I'm supposed to do. Do what you're supposed to do. Plan okay. to work and work the plan. Plan to work and work the plan. Go ahead. Anybody else? Somebody tell that if you notice what you just what you just said was dependent on you. Being accountable means that you have someone to report to. Because guess what? You will never hold yourself accountable for what you need to do. You will never do that. Okay? An accountable person says, everything in my life is a result of my choices and actions. I own my life. Accountability is a tool for continually chart changing the results in your life in those areas that matter the most. A person who is accountable in their 20% says, I own my life. And in certain areas, I want to continually improve my results. I want to be purpose, purposeful. I'll be learning based in order to continue improving. Okay. Ignite is going to provide you with the tools to develop and cultivate your accountability to be successful. What are some other ways that you can be accountable right now? Getting a partner. Getting a partner. And someone mentioned that here recently starting an accountability group. Mm -hmm. What else? Just completing this, this training. Completing this training. And not just completing it, but what? And I'm applying that. Applying it and doing it. Because you can you can sit in a training class for years and years and just be absorbing what's in there and not doing what you ought to be doing. Practice. And people say practice makes perfect. No, practice makes improvement. Okay? No one's perfect, but we all are improving. Remember you reach the highest level of achievement in business and life by adopting the six personal perspectives. Um, life happens, reality shows up. Doesn't seek reality, ignorance. You don't ask any questions. Seeks reality, they're aware. What's the situation? Those that fight reality, they're in denial. That's not the way it is. That's not how I see it. That's your perception. Acknowledge reality, clarity. This is the way it is. Got it. I'll see what's going on. Blames, projection. And here's one thing that I tell people about blame. A lot of people will blame their coach. They'll blame their mentor for what they're not doing because they're 
not doing what they should be doing. You follow me? It's one thing for you to do what you're supposed to do versus blaming others for you not getting to where you should be. I tell people this, if it is to be, it's up to me. Y'all repeat that. If it is to be, it's up to me. And sometimes, listen to that, sometimes, repeat it, sometimes I need to get a checkup from the neck up. Okay? So you want to get those? If it is to be, it's up to me. And sometimes I got to get a checkup from the neck up. Personal ex ex excuses. It's not my job. It was never given, I, I was never given a chance. It doesn't work here. You find solutions with possibilities. What are my options? How can I get what I want? What can I do? Number five, weights and hopes, resignation. It was meant to be, it will happen. If it was meant to be, it will happen. Time will tell, it's out of my hands. Action plan, let's get started. Time's up, let's go. This is what I can do. Happiness is not an individual sport, okay? This quote is about happiness and yet it applies to business as well. Do you agree? Your business success is not an individual sport. As Gary Keller has learned, no one succeeds alone, okay? No one succeeds alone. This quote comes from, uh, who is it, Sean? Aker, who pioneered the research and reveals happy humans are more productive, creative, better at problem solving, and even healthier and less stressed. Would you agree that uh, these outcomes lead to better success in business? Would you agree? When you're happy, and you know, happy is depending on what's happening on the outside, but when you're happy and when you're up, how many of you have ever been, been broke? How did it feel? I guess. It didn't feel bad, right? You didn't feel good, right? Scary. 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 You know, and, and guess what? Guess what? Listen to this. Listen to this. All of us have our own definition of growth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All of us have our own definition of growth. Somebody can be sit, sitting with $10,000 in the bank and say, I'm broke. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody has their own definition of growth. You can't judge. But the way you feel when you're broke, it's just like Angela said, bless you. It's just like Angela said, it's not just financial, sometimes you can be emotionally broke. Okay? And that sets you back. Happiness is not an individual sport. When you're emotionally broke, what do you do? You seek out. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you seek out help. You follow me? Okay, because you realize that you cannot do it alone. Guess what? In this business, you cannot do it alone. You can't. You cannot do it by yourself. Okay. What are your ahas? What are your ahas? Some of your ahas in this, this lesson. The affirmation that the numbers work, you know, because we're in a diving campaign and I have my moments of self doubt, like, is this really going to work? It's so old fashioned. But this affirms it, like, no, just do the work consistently. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very so much the same business to you know, right. the people part. Mm -hmm. You'll know now, mind you, 30 years ago, everything was paper, right? Mm -hmm. Stacks of, you had books, right? Okay. The one transaction. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so you'll notice throughout Ignite, we're going to share some ahas because they're powerful and meaningful insights that come from the reflection of the experience that we're having. One thing that I learned in bold, ahas mean agents helping agents. So when we talk about ahas, we want you to share your aha so that you can help other agents that are around you. So what we just went through in regards to sparking that part of our career what type of ahas that you did you have? Because when we share them out loud, we actually further strengthen the power of agents helping agents. And so it helps us participate. So what 
ahas did you learn? Yes. Recognizing your strengths and weaknesses and also addressing your limiting beliefs. Yes. Very important. Yes. 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 And you mentioned the uh, contact sports. When you did the first one letters of six letters, maybe four six days, mm -hmm. that's something that definitely will be you know. Okay. Six letters that we talk into the year, that's something you will be you have to do the email. If you keep that system, then you have to hope you get the same result that he got the first year. Right. So it's for it's so systems and um what do we say? System and models. And models. Systems and models. Because those stay the same. And, and guess what? With KW, with KW, they're already built in. Guess what you have to do? All you have to do is put the names in there. If you say, listen, if you say I'm not going to do nothing. I just want to see how it works. You can go to a title agent, get the names, address, sometimes phone numbers, and put them in your uh, your command and set them up on a campaign, a neighborhood campaign, and just let it grow. You can do that. Okay. So Keller Williams, Keller Williams is big on mindset. KW is big on models and systems based on proven system strategies of those who found success before. And our job is to, is, is to take advantage of the collective wisdom so that we can highly be highly successful as well as make this a chosen career that we have for life. So let's see how KW culture will power you through your career. So, there's an entire page devoted. Let me see. There's an entire page devoted to the culture on KW Connect, our company internet, on the resources that are available to you. In fact, outline our culture is the number one reason for people to say they chose Keller Williams. You know, we have our MVVP, um, and we'll go over that, but. Here we have our Red Day, diversity, equity, and inclusion, KW Cares. The wonderful thing about KW Cares, now KW Cares is our nonprofit arm, and we experienced this just to let you know how KW is. You know, KW has um, MegaCap. MegaCap is held in Austin, Texas. It's an awesome event. KW spends a lot of money. Um, agents come there from all over the world. When I say all over the world, I literally mean all over the world. And so remember when um, the hurricanes happened and everything was destroyed, um, we were wondering whether or not we were gonna have mega cap. So we had already paid our tickets. Um, we ended up in Austin, Texas. And Instead of having the regular mega cap, Gary Keller turned that into a um, event where we went out and helped the families that flooded their homes. We literally had care packages, delivered them. We literally went to homes and took out all the walls that were damaged by water. We literally went and fed families that were without, and we did that for a full week. And that's what KW Cares does. KW Cares has their own trucks. They, they purchase whatever needs when a disaster happens, or, and then definitely for their KW agents. So the funny thing about it is other companies have copied after KW. Um, I have a friend that I'm talking to. She may come over um, from conference. She, she was laughing at me. She said, she said, Fred, she said, you know what's funny? And I said, what's funny? She said, you know, conference has conference cares, you know, which is like KW cares. I said, oh, well, you know, hey, it's a compliment when people copy after you. You know, that's a, comp that's a compliment. 
So we have wealth building, we have KW Kids Camp, we have a program that engages the next generation of children, okay? And it's an awesome program that they use, that they do. And I was really actually trying to think whether or not we can get it in here because what it does is, it's nothing to do with real estate. It has to do with building the character of kids. And they do it on a weekend basis where they ask people to bring their kids in and then we train them. Not on real estate, but just on life. It's awesome. Uh, KW Wellness. So we have uh, Keeping Holistic Health, the top of mind, our culture, Red Relief, and KW Family Fund. When we talk about the family fund, everybody in here know Gary, uh, Gary Nix? So Gary Nix, when, when I was, uh, uh, he was one of my first speakers when um, I started the team leader at KW Inglewood. The reason why is because of this story. Gary was, you know, he has to tell the story the correct way, but Gary was barely here, okay? He had closed a deal and he was going on vacation with his family and uh, the day that they were supposed to leave, his daughter was at school. She was a cheerleader. They threw her up and they, and she fell. And they dropped her. And she, be, she, they had to rush her to the hospital. All of this went on. And so KW South Bay, we stepped in and helped, but then KW International came in and, and gave him a lump sum to take care of his family at that time of need. See, because we're more than just real estate, we're a family. And, and one thing that the young lady I was talking about, she said, one thing that I can tell you, she said, the difference between where I am and where in, in KW is where I am is, yeah, there are people there. She said, but KW is a family. You know, that's what we are here. So I'm going to be different. Oh, but no, yes, but that's what we do. Okay. Mission, vision, values, beliefs, and perspective. This is what we talk about here. Um, uh, when we talk about mission, vision, values, beliefs, and perspective, our mission is to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth living. living leaving okay you can leave your legacy to your children you can leave your legacy to your grandchildren you can leave your legacy to your great grandchildren did you know you can do that yes you can okay and then our belief system wi4c2 teams win win or no deal just because just because someone wins does not mean somebody else has to lose Okay, we are not cut from agents. We don't discount our commissions. Okay, one thing that we tell people, you say, well, well, why do we always have to offer the other agent? You know, you'll get into it. We have to always have to, uh, offer the other, other agent two and a half percent because we don't want to be considered a discount brokerage. Of course, there are some um, uh, different things that we deal with. But I tell people, I tell people in the real estate class, and you laugh at me. I say, listen, if I get a six percent, if I get a six, now y'all don't laugh at me either, okay? If I get a six percent listing, okay, and I'm a listing agent, my commission is going to be three and a half percent, okay? The other agent is going to get two and a half. If I get a listing that's five percent, guess what my commission is going to be? Two and a half percent, okay? If I get a listing that's four percent. Then I have to talk with Simon, but guaranteed it's going to be two and two. The only way I win is if I get a 6% listing and the other day agent gets two and a half percent because I'm never going to go under two and a half percent unless it's a less, less than 5% listing. And you know, there are times when you do do a 4% listing, but it's not. So win, win or no deal. Integrity, do the right thing. Somewhere in your mind, when you're dealing with a transaction, your mind will say, that's not right, okay? Go with your mind. Our responsibility is to do the right thing. Customers always come first, we know that. Commitment in all things. Communication, seek first to understand. 
and then creativity, ideas before results. Teamwork, together everyone achieves more. Trust starts with honesty. Equity supports uh, equity opportunities for all. One thing that you have to understand in this business, you can go as high or as low as you want in this business. Jennifer, who is our Jennifer and Minnie, who is our OP, right? They're our OP. So Jennifer started as an MCA, went from an MCA to, and I may miss some things, but she went from an MCA to MCA for international. Okay. MCA is a market center administrator. She's the one, they're the ones that make sure you get paid. They're the ones that make sure you get your check, okay? Um, and then she started working for International, and now she's no P. Okay, so you have the opportunity with equity in the company to own a part of the KW, to be an OP, to be a team leader. You have those opportunities. Success, let me see. Let's see. What's an OP? Operating principle. Okay. Success results through people. So Red Day, we do Red Day. Red Day, renew, energize, and donate. This entire company sets aside the second Thursday of every May to renew, energize, and donate within the communities we serve. So the second Thursday, every KW office is closed down to do uh, community service. Every KW is closed down to do community service. KW Cares, we take care of our own. KW Cares is dedicated to serving its associates and their qualifying family members experiencing hardship as a result of a sudden emergency. And then KW Kids Can is dedicated to empowering young adults to unlock their greatest potential. Any ahas in this? Hmm? Do you know of any company that does this? I mean, I, that's the old question. You know, I don't know. I've been a K, I'm, I'm a KW kid, so I, I haven't been anywhere else. So you let me know if there's any other companies that do this so that I know. Okay. How about a drinking day? So who? The oh, the drinking age company. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 So you know, and and the interesting thing is, you know, you um, how can I say it? I've seen people that I started working with that left and came back. Okay, and and most times the reason why they left the games was the other company was offering them uh, money. Now, imagine this: the market's down, but your production is great. The market's down. Previous years have been great, so now I'm going to offer you money to come over here because the market is down. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so I you can tease Simon when it comes yesterday because when it comes tomorrow, because Simon was uh, at that at drinking his country for a little bit, but he had to come back to KW South Bay. All right, so you can tease him about that. I want I want y'all to tease him about that. Okay. That's how I got my broker's license. Uh, Century Twenty One had this real estate trainers like mm -hmm. crash course in Santa Ana. Wasn't that C Twenty One? I was in the early nineties. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Go back. <laughs> <laughs> See, in this section, we're going to talk about how Keller Williams, as a global company and your local market center, provides value to you and your clients. Since nineteen eighty three, Keller Williams has cultivated an agent centric, technology driven, and education based. Mm -hmm culture that rewards agents as stakeholders. 1983 was a year I graduated high school. Okay, that's when Kayla Keller Williams got started. Mm -hmm. The world's largest global real estate fran franchise by agent count and has more than 11,000 offices, 200,000 associates, 
It is the number one in units and sales volume in the United States and the forefront of technology. Now, you may say, if we're number one, why is everyone else claiming to be number one? Because everyone else is claiming to be number one. They are publicly traded. I have a fun fact. This isn't publicly held. This is not publicly held. This is a private owned organization. Yes. Keeps the integrity. See? Keeps the integrity. And our numbers, we when you look at the ones that claim to be number one, they're number one based on the numbers that they're reporting to their stockholders. But when you look at our numbers, our numbers succeed their numbers. And we are privately owned. There's your aha. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, KWX, we do have KWX, which is the holding company of Keller Williams and is comprised of Keller Williams, Keller Williams Worldwide, Keller Williams manages Keller offices. We have offices in Punta Cana. We have offices in Spain. We have offices in, um, uh, literally, we have offices everywhere. Okay, so that is the wonderful thing. Top franchise for veterans in two, oops, I'm sorry. Top franchise for veterans in 2021. Top female friendly company, as you notice, many posted that just recently. We were voted again, the most recent uh, female friendly company. Top 500 franchises in 2022 world's best employers in 2021, America's best customer service experience, America's best employers for women's now and new grads, best employers for diversity in 2021 and much more. Now, the training and the coaching is awesome. We have Connect and Connect Live, uh, local and regional training events, family reunion, mega camp, Keller Williams University, KWU enablement, command training, KB2 maps, and bold. Bold is business objective learning, uh, business objective living life by design. And so one thing that we learn is how to do business. Everything you need, KW has. Listen, KW, the reason why when um, the pandemic happened, the reason why we still soared is because we're not only a brick and mortar company, but we're also already an online company. So whatever you get in, in here, you can also, also get online, okay? Command, this is your integrated end-to-end -end Keller Cloud platform for running your business and growing your business. You drop your leads at Command, you set them up on, on, on a drip campaign, you answer them with a Twilio number, you can text, you can do your websites, you can do your cards. We've partnered with Facebook, so the algorithms all algorithms for Facebook are already built into our platform that you can um, advertise through there. Uh, we have our concierge service for your business cards, for everything that you need, that's there, okay? We have the app, the app that uh, you can share with your clients so that when they're looking, they can go into the app on their phone and you are branded as their agent here. Here's the wonderful thing about KW that I love also. Now, if you notice, Crystal said that Crystal's on my team. Guess what? I'm not a broker. Did you all hear me? I'm not a broker and I don't want to be a broker. <laughs> you know the responsibilities of a broker. I don't want to be a broker. But the wonderful thing about KW is you can have a team without being a broker. And not only that, you can have a team in multiple offices without even being a broker. Isn't that wonderful? That's, that's for y'all that are thinking about going further and doing all of that. And another thing is working with KW, it means that if I'm working with someone in Palmdale, all I have to do is partner with an agent in Palmdale and say, listen, this, I have a client out there. I need you to take care of them. This is what, I, what we're going to do as far as commissions. Okay. Command is wonderful. The app is wonderful. They can look for anything and everything they need right there on the app in their phone, their clients. My market center value. I'm not sure where these numbers are. They didn't do them, so we're not going to go there. Okay? So, they, okay. They, 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 they. 
So the profit share and growth share, no financial risk, no legal risk, no down payment, no phone calls. What does that mean? Profit share means that when you come in, the first thing they ask you is who referred you to Cato? Okay, who referred you to Cato? And they're gonna say, well, would you want them to be your sponsor? Their sponsor means that they're going to be in your profit share tree, okay? The only time the person who you refer as a sponsor gets paid in profit share is when the office is profitable, okay? But the money doesn't come from your commission. It does not come from you. Guess where it comes from? It comes from the owners of the office. So instead of the office getting 100% of the profit, the office gets 52%, and that 48% is split between the agents that help the office get profitable through profit share. Now, the wonderful thing about profit share is it just doesn't have to happen here. You can recruit, you can recruit all over the world and have people in your profit share tree. Because I have someone in Philadelphia, I have someone in Las Vegas, I have someone in Atlanta. Spain? No one in Spain. No one in Spain. But in Spain, you know, you don't even need a license to do real estate. That, that's weird. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. But you can have them. And if that office is successful, you get a profit check, trip, uh, check every month. Now, mind you, if I stop the business, I still get my profit share check. If I pass away, my profit share check goes to my family. As long as there's somebody in my downline that's doing real estate in an office that is profitable. Mm -hmm. And no having to ask for it. No Not having to ask. Have to get, like the foreclosures. That's it. The only thing that gets me, and this is my pet peeve, that I don't know whether to understand or not. When people get profit share, go to another company and still get their profit share check from KW. Isn't that wonderful? You, you can get your profit share check, leave KW, and still get your profit share check. That's it. Any ahas? What's your aha? The the thing. The thing. Yeah, you know, the, what was it? I don't know. I volunteered that aha. Yes, you did. Oh, that were not publicly held. Publicly held. Correct. Yes, correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. Okay. Any other ahas? Okay. I know, making money off my shot. Making money off my shot. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yes. That's, that's it. That's leaving a legacy. Though. Leaving that's a what legacy. What you want to do is leave a legacy. Exactly. Oh, and so sad. Do it. Yeah. So here are our resources. We have Keller Williams, Keller Williams Worldwide. We have Keller Mortgage, Keller Managed, Keller Covered, and Keller Offered. We have all of these things that are built into KWX companies, okay? Diversity in education, we talked about these on the other screen. Young professionals, KW Young Professionals, and we did, yeah. Your vision, your career. Everybody, today is what? August 1st. August 1st. Today is August 1st, 2023. Your business is thriving and your life is everything you dreamed of. Your customers rave about the experience and value you provide and think of you when they have a real estate need. Your family and friends are so proud of your success and they are consistently referring business your way. You are helping others live their dream of owning a home because you are focused on helping them get what they desire. You are building the foundation and momentum for your entire career and gaining relationships and experiences and the income you desire. You are the top agent in the market center or rookie of the year if you're new. Who's going for it? Yeah. Who's going for the rookie of the year? All right, come on, let, who's going for it? All right now, okay. You are poised to hire a part-time assistant to handle your 80% while you take care of the 20% that 
that grows your business. You are on the path to what? What did you say it again? You're on the path. <laughs> Financial independence. You are on your way. Yes. All right, Angela. <laughs> I do all the retirement play. Oh, you do? Oh, you know what? Let me tell you something. Spain is beautiful. If you've never been there, you you have to go. The one thing I took away was siesta. Oh. Siesta, everything shuts down. And I was wondering, I was wondering my morning. He said, because my my daughter in uh, her mom used to be a chef before she retired. And he said that. He said, listen, when you come, you have to make sure you eat every time they put food in front of your plate. <laughs> and I was worried, you know, because I'm, you know, I, I'm good at eating one meal a day and I'm done. You know, I'm one and done. And so I was like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. So we get there, her mom cooks, I eat, cook again, I eat, and <laughs> listen. You know how when we eat, all the food is on the table? You know, you know what you're going to eat? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm saying, they'll put one plate in front of you. When you're finished, they'll go in, get another plate. Oh. These are five, five levels of food, okay? Oh, five then when you finish, they'll put another one in front. The only it's good thing is you, gotta, you have a lot of wine, okay? Mm -hmm. You got to get a lot of wine, you know? But I was able to do it and I enjoyed it. But guess what? That siesta came right in time. Oh, yeah. You know, you and I was a person, you know, I, if I slept during the day, I couldn't go to sleep at night. But that was a beautiful, that is a beautiful thing to have siesta and take a nap and go to sleep and then get right back up and start your day. Because to, to them, even when they came out here, and they were like, let's go to dinner. Their let's go to dinner is like at nine o'clock at night. Oh, wow. You know, so yeah. Is so what CS do is a nap. It's a nap. Just shut down. <laughs> you got a sign. You got a sign that says on the job, it says open from here to here, closed. And then opens back up. From but here to here. Okay. And then the, I do have another place too. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty common. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> So, so here we have funding your big lot. Um, somebody said in your booklet, in your booklet, uh, in in your in your book, it has this diagram. So, what you want to do is you want to say, okay, you want to put the number that you want to make right here in the center, and you want to put what you're going to do with that amount of money. How many think three hundred sixty-four thousand dollars is a lot of money? In real estate, it really is. Can I tell you the secret? They talk is so funny. Can I tell you the secret? I'm telling you the secret. Last year, I made 264000 That's not a lot of money. Trust. Okay? It's, it's not. And, that, and guess what? There are people in the office making double that. I'm just the... I'm just the low man on the phone. phone. That's you know, I'm the low man on the phone. But you put that number in the center and say, okay, what am I going to do with that money? So if the normal commission pays twelve thousand five hundred. That's average. Average. Gosh, what well, commission section is that per year? <laughs> that that would be hundred. No. Over no. twenty. No. Well, well, yes. Because a couple of my transactions were over a million. Um, okay, so I had two that were over a million. Um, but you're looking at anywhere, remember I said 36 transactions in 12 months during three hours of lead generation. That would yield you probably about a million dollars if you did 36 transactions in this market. Okay? If you did 36 transactions in this market, it would probably yield you about a million dollars. That's take home. That's Avenue's pay pay though. You want me to give you another aha? Uh -huh? Is I don't have to keep paying pay, keep, keep paying pay Can I can I tell you something? I literally, I literally feel guilty when I cap. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. 
I feel guilty when I cap. Now, if you guys don't know what capping is, cap means that you pay a certain amount and until your anniversary date, you don't have to take care of you anything. I really feel guilty now. Now, don't let don't don't let Simon hear me. But when I started KW in, eight, in, in 2005, the cap was $18,000, okay? And it stayed 18,000 until I left to go open up KW Inglewood. When I came back here, it was 24, 20, 23. 23. It was 23. And then, guess what KW did? Lower it down to 13,000. I feel guilty. <laughs> you know, want to know why I feel guilty? Because guess what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you a clue. If you do one of those regular transactions, anywhere between three to five bills, you will cap and you're at 100%. Okay. There's my high on that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't feel guilty because you still have another partner. I still have another what? Partner in IRS. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh. Uh, and you said, don't feel guilty because you still have another partner in this IRS. And that's absolutely true. You know, so um, do what you want to do. Put that list, put it on your, win your mirror. Put your goal amount that you want to make and say what you're going to do with that money that you make. Okay? To achieve success, you need motivation and inspiration for doing it. You need your big why. Anybody can tell me what their big why is? My baby. Your babies? How old are your babies? Uh, they're about to turn the next thing, so 24, 22. <clears throat> Let me go. I always get confused. Okay. <laughs> 23, 21, almost 20, and then 11. All right. That's, yeah, that's yeah. Me. Your big why? Why you do what the you do? Why. And my parents. Mm -hmm. I, I, and you know, when you really sit down and think about your big why, it's hard to keep your eyes dry. Mm -hmm. when you think about your big why. Because we're always like, <laughs> you know, it's hard to keep your eyes dry. Because your big why is what's going to push you to be successful in this business. Where, where your commission, sorry, I can't read these things. Where your commission dollars go. Yeah. The other agent, your market center, business expenses, taxes, your take home. There it is. It's gone to then take home. So net income goal. If your net income goal is $100,000, your company dollar and royalty cap is $30,000. Business expenses are $50,000. Total gross commission is $180,000. Your average commission is $9,000. Your annual transaction goal is twenty. dollars um, Bless you. What would your numbers be if those were there? And because we don't have our books, usually we have our books in front of us, but we won't do those uh, there. But what are some of the ahas that you got out of uh, what we just talked about? So, daily success systems. Ah, this is what we used to call are 10 four daily activities, 10 four daily activities. And what the 10 four daily activities were, you have 10 conversations, you put the people who you conversated with into your database, you handwrite 10 written notes to those that you talk to, to thank them for talking to you. You make your social media engagements, and then different enrichments that you have, okay? So those are some of the things that you have to do on a daily basis. Talk to 10 people. This is, this is what their minimum is. But we say, if you wanna do lead generation, we say, talk to 20, okay? But if you have a daily success system, if 20 is too much, 
then you make your 20 by doing 10 conversations, putting them into uh, your data, uh, data entry, into your command, and then setting up a drip campaign with those of you, those of the ones that you've talked with. You know, I got kind of upset this weekend because my wife and I were going to dinner yesterday and she said, I want to go see that open house. I said, there's an open house around the corner from my house. I said, oh man. So I drove around the corner, we went to the open house. It was a house they remind on and did all of that. Now my mind said, I, all I'm thinking is, why am I been talking to the people in my neighborhood? Why have I been uh, a secret agent in my own neighborhood? Mm -hmm. Why? Wow. You know, you know, so we don't do everything right. But we also have that have that self accountability to know. Listen, I'm not doing everything that I should be, so I'm going to strap up my bootstraps and start doing what I need to do in order to get more business. For those of you that are new, you can do it. I am a witness. It does not take you a year to get your first transaction. Okay, it does not take you a year. If you say you want a transaction. You keep saying in your mind, I want a transaction, I need a transaction, I'm gonna get a transaction. We can say that I want a transaction, I need a transaction, I'm gonna get a transaction. I want a transaction, I need a transaction, I'm gonna get a transaction. Y'all sick of y'all can sick of it. You know, you can do it. Okay. I hope they don't look at this on the video and talk. So when you're calling, remember when you're getting numbers, make sure that they're not on the do not call list. We always have to say that to make sure that there are different ways that you can get phone numbers. And I'm gonna get you some lead, um, lead places that you can go to that does that. Red X that does it. Um, anybody heard of uh, cold, cold Realty Resources? Yeah. Have you heard of Cold Realty Resources? Yeah. Cold Realty Resources, they do neighborhoods, they do phone numbers, they do emails, they do all of that, okay? So powerful conversations get results. Lead generate, uncover motivations, identify objections, um, close deals, speak in the terms that the customer understands and build confidence. You see, the reason why we changed it from scripts and from scripts to conversations, because conversations change, okay? Conversations are adjusted based on what people say. So if you're having a conversation with me and we're going back and forth, Sam, we, we had a conversation just now, right? We had a conversation about, uh, about you feeling and coming your living beliefs, right? Yeah. Now, did we have that conversation before? No. No. But no, we never had a conversation. But if it was a script, it would have been, well, Sandra, you should say this and thing. Mm -hmm. But it was something that's natural that comes out to help because our, our basic goal is to help those around us, whether we're helping them purchase, whether we're helping them sell, whether we're helping them through a transaction. That is our purpose, okay? Purpose of and benefits of conversations. Did you find everything you were looking for? Go ahead, look around and please let me know if I can help you. I see you're admiring that big screen TV. Are you looking to get one of those for yourself for this big weekend? Did that sound like a script that I was talking about? It's more of a conversation, okay? People you have met in one way, shape or form, your sphere of influence. Guess what? Every meal you have that's outside of your home should be a real estate marketing event, okay? For one, your taxes, <laughs> you can write it off. And one, to see whether or not somebody can either, because mind you, there are people who are waiting on you in a restaurant that are realtors, licensed realtors, okay? We had this big event, um, uh, Minnie and Jennifer did an event for those uh, people who had, had certain production uh, at SoFi Stadium. And we all went to SoFi Stadium, we had a good time, we did the tour of the stadium. And then towards the end of the stadium tour, 
we were on the field, we were throwing a football this right after uh, Super Bowl weekend, having a good time. We were on the, you know, everybody paid ten thousand dollars to the seat. We get to be on the field. Um, but the last room we went into, uh, there was a guy that was there, and she was guiding us through um, the locker room. And she was like, "Well, all of this is, you know, is torn down because they're waiting for the next season. But let me take you somewhere." She took us to the room where all of the football players um, wrote their sign their name as the, the Rams 2020 uh, 21 champions. So I took a picture against the wall, you know, with all the signatures. That beats ten thousand dollars a seat, right? Mm-hmm. So while we were leaving. You know, we we're talking to the lady, you know, she was like, where are you, where are you, Keller Williams? She said, oh, I'm a realtor. And all of a sudden, now you mind, Keller Williams agent. Now all of a sudden, all of us like, <laughs> you know? And so, you're, Keller Williams, you're, you're an agent. She said, yeah. She said, I'm licensed at this company. And she said, well, you know, why don't you come by? Why don't you talk to us, you know? Give us an opportunity to share with you what we have. You know, my you, she was working at some point. Guess where she is now? He's here in Calgary, in South Bay. Isn't that awesome? You know, talking is your greatest tool that you can use. Catch your sphere on the move. Uh, seven to 10 years. One thing that I found when I started marketing to this, so if you guys want to know what to market to, you look at the team meeting very careful. Now, Simon is usually talking about the numbers of how many homes have sold and the amount that sold. I look at one number. You know what that number has been? how long people have lived in their property. And you know what the average number of people who live in their property? From that list that I saw Simon do was 16 to 17 years. So if that means that if people are living it out from 16 to 17 years, if I can market to those that are right at 16 to 17 years, do you think I can get some of those sales? Does it make sense? Yeah. So those are the, those those kids, I call them kids, man, but I'm old. Those people in um, the productivity class were getting them a list to call around to um, uh, call prospect uh, just to, just so that they can call people to introduce themselves. And guess what the criteria is? The neighborhood that they want that have been in their house for 16 to 17 years. Hmm. You follow me? Good, good look at, right? Hmm. So. It's always cyclical. Here it says seven to 10 years that they move. Now, mind you, I'm, a, I'm a, an antiquated person. I've been in my house for 24 years. So, you know, but then around that time, I was looking to move. I was, you know what, really, you know, I was looking to move. Just think about it. We were going to downsize. Guess what stopped us from downsizing? My mother in law moved down. Okay. Yeah, so that's what stopped us from downsizing. But, you know, hey. Yeah. So you want to practice forward. Don't fear your sphere. Always talk about family occupation, recreation, and rooms. That is a conversation. Angela, how are you doing today? Good. Good, good. Your family? Is your, is your family around here? Oh. Oh no. Where do you live in? Um, China. Oh, in China. Oh, okay. Now are you the only one here? Or are you? Yeah, I'm here. Wow, how does that feel being the only one here? Uh, I, I work with somebody. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So what do you currently do? I real estate and uh, teaching in college. Oh, okay, you teach college? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, let me guess. You teach numbers, don't you? Yes, I do. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> but I know that. Well, let me ask you, what do you like to do? For you? What do you mean? Oh, you like to swim? Yeah. Now, do you like to do underwater? Because I only swim underwater. So, or do you do the, the whole thing? There's a butterfly. Oh, well, I was younger and a scoopier. I stay underwater. Oh. Now I'm old and uh, want to stay away from from all these uh, injuries. I stay above the water. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, what are some of your dreams? Some of the things that you want to do? My dream? Uh, God. <laughs> I do. <laughs> mm-hmm. What are some of your dreams that you want? I dream of, you know, just have my, uh, my parents will be over. Oh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Well, I appreciate it. You know, here's my card. Blah, blah, blah. We just did four. Okay. 
Okay, that's how easy it is to talk. Now, mind you, I don't know her, but imagine talking with your sphere, people who you know already. Okay, it creates that conversation. What are some of your ahas? Hmm? I do fear my sphere, and she knows that. I get, I fear my fear my sphere because I don't want to be that person. Like, oh, here she comes, and someone, you know, and it's. It's been so long since I've had to feel like that person, but I've always tried to keep it separate, which is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I apologize. I did not know I talked for two hours straight. I did not know that that was, <laughs> we're tapping in. So, that, okay, we get there. So, how is your thinking changed? And, you know, the only reason why I knew I had been there because I didn't look at the clock is because Sandra was putting up her book. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I had to look up. It was like, wow. Okay. So, how has your thinking changed? What ideas in your mindset? These are some. How do you feel differently about what was uh, uh, about things that went on and what it was meaningful to you? And how will your be behaviors be different going forward? What actions will you take? What tools, models, or systems will you use? And how will they make you accountable? I hope you all enjoyed today's class. I apologize for talking so long. I did not know I was talking so long. So, so get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about embracing your job. Simon will be uh, your instructor for tomorrow. So we hope that you get ready. 11 o'clock sharp, we'll be here. And then we'll get ready to move forward. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you. Yes, Dan Simon, you'll be here tomorrow. I'll be here tomorrow. You're here tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Are you guys excited? Thank you guys online. Appreciate you guys coming. Thank, Thank you, Brad.